Thanks, Jason, for the introduction, and it's great to be back in 2024 with the Volunteer Forum. Tonight, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to include a little bit around doctrine as well. So the topics that I want to touch on tonight are around the AFAC peer review recommendation three, our operational driving, and our operational doctrine uh, work that's occurring in CFA at the moment. If I can start with the driving project. So we've got a project that's running at the moment that is aimed at increasing the number of license holders in medium rigid and heavy rigid. So far, we've had 379 members approved to obtain their heavy or medium rigid licenses, and they're now going through a process uh, in their local area. We'll continue to roll that out, and we're going through a procurement process at the moment to um, you know, cement those arrangements uh, and continue to support the districts um, and where the license acquisitions will be funded centrally through uh, CFA headquarters and ODT. We're looking to increase the number of driver educators and I'll talk a little bit about that um, as, as we go on. And we're also exploring the use of driver simulation for code one driving. So we're in conversations at the moment with various providers and having a look to see what they can offer uh, to increase our ability to put drivers in a safe seat, uh, but a code one seat as they uh, operate in, in a local environment and where we could potentially move the simulator around the state and allow members to have uh, good access to that. And the last part, uh, our fleet services team are working on the acquisition of uh, driver training vehicles. Um, so to ensure that we've got good access to the vehicles to deliver training without impacting our operational capability within our districts. If I go back to the driver education component, which is a key area for us, we have a number of driver educators through our volunteer ranks and driving instructors through our paid ranks but we're well and truly underrepresented in female driving instructors or driver educators through our volunteer ranks. So what we're doing is we're offering three courses this year for driver educators that'll commence in April. There'll be 14 online sessions during the week, two hour sessions once a week, and then there'll be three weekend prac sessions broken up over three different groups. One of those groups we're offering to female only so we're looking at how we can increase the number of female driver educators, and we're trialling uh, an opportunity here to run a program specifically set for our female drivers um, to apply for if they'd like to follow that pathway um, through the course. Obviously, uh, females can also apply for the other two courses that we'll be running uh, at the same time. So that's pretty exciting for us in the driver education space and we hopefully will open up the number of educators and then be able to assist brigades in the delivery of driver training into the future. If people are interested in that, I'd ask them to get in contact with their um, district CLD uh, and to make nomination to uh, attend one of those three courses. The other component we're working through in the driver education is for the release of drive off-road, uh, we're doing an upgrade to our existing driver instructors and driver educators. And so far we've had 46 of our driver educators and driver instructors do that uh, additional training to bring them up to speed with the new uh, Respond off-road course. Um, again, looking to increase capacity to deliver training into the field. The second thing I'll talk about tonight is the AFAC recommendation three, which is the feedback process. So um, just to cap, cap off, the AFAC recommendations, there were 14 recommendations made to CFA from the AFAC peer review. And AFAC recommendation three identified that we needed to introduce a feedback process to allow our instructors and our students to provide feedback on course material uh, in, a, in a detailed sense, and then to be able to follow that feedback through to ensure that it's linked to future course development and that the person raising that feedback has uh, feedback themselves on, on the information they've provided ODT. We've now got that and uh, we've set up a link through Members Online that allows our members to um, add the feedback to uh, a course. So they'll go online, click on, click on the link. There's a video on Members Online and under the training page that will also describe how to follow the process, but it's it's fairly intuitive. They'll be asked to click on the link, uh, uh, complete the information around the training course, and that will then link to a product which is called LawView. 
and uh, we use this in other parts of the organisation. So we, we, we're using an existing system. What that does is allows the um, member to track that feedback they've provided, but it also holds us accountable to the feedback that's been provided. So the member can actually um, have clear understanding of what we've done with that feedback and, and how that's processing through the system. The other part of the Members Online page that's been established with the feedback, the button alongside that also is a complaints button. So there's two, there's a feedback button for the course material and a complaints button if people have uh, any complaints around the training uh, that they've received or the way training's delivered um, or anything under that training banner. So that can go from behavioural standards to uh, you know, where they've been uh, potentially isolated from courses or not able to apply for courses. Again, that complaint system is linked to our CFA broader complaint system, so it's, it's mirrored, it actually runs through the same process, and any complaints involving training will come back to the relevant person for follow-up. Uh, so there are two things that we've linked to the AFAC peer review, and we're quite comfortable now. We'll monitor it. Uh, we'll certainly monitor the, and report on the complaints that are coming through by number, uh, but we'll also monitor how well it's accepted as, as a tool that we can use uh, within CFA. And the last piece I want to talk about tonight is our doctrine. So ODT, Operational Doctrine and Training, uh, part of our team uh, consists of the doctrine team that focuses on developing operational doctrine for CFA. So that includes a review of our SOPs and standing orders. So tonight we'll invite Tim Connor. Tim's our Acting Manager Operational Doctrine to walk us through firstly the operational doctrine that's under development at the moment and also how people can provide feedback on a doctrine. Thanks, Rowan. In 2022, CFA introduced a new digital policy management system to become CFA's central source of truth for policy and procedure documents. This system allows CFA to more easily manage and update SOPs. The doctrine team is currently working through a process of reviewing all SOPs. As they are reviewed and transitioned into the new system, you will see some changes to the style and format of these documents. A number of SOPs have been updated recently, including the Notification of Injuries and Fatalities SOP, which details CFA's updated process where a WorkSafe notifiable incident occurs at an incident, such as a serious injury or a fatality. The incident controller must ensure that assistance is provided to the injured person and Firecom is immediately notified. Firecom will then notify the state duty officer or the district duty officer. Only the CFA OHS duty officer is to notify WorkSafe. The low voltage fuse removal SOP has been updated to include additional information where some low voltage fuses may contain asbestos. The emergency evacuation signal SOP has been updated with new terminology and now includes an interoperability table to show similar procedures from other fire agencies we work with. We are close to finalising other documents for consultation, including SOPs that relate to incident controllers and agency commanders, management of media and brigade and group procedures. As documents are reviewed, they are placed on the board and board for feedback and listed within CFA News. Feedback from volunteers is extremely important to the team and we review each comment that comes in. To provide feedback, head to policies.cfa.vic.gov.au and click on the bulletin board link. Thanks, Tim. That's fantastic. It's really good to see how uh, the system works and understand that you know, people can provide feedback on our doctrine. Obviously, we use uh, VFBV for the doctrine uh, feedback, but we also are really keen to get feedback directly from the field. Uh, it's an important part of the work that we do and I really appreciate your work and the work of your team to help prepare us for the future. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, everyone. Back to you, Chief.